A curious phenomenon took place, especially in the US, during the interwar period. And that was the time where there were intense activity by the so-called swamis across the US. The whole thing started really back after Swami Vivekananda gave his speech in Chicago. And in 1898, for example, this is a picture taken from the New York Herald. And it tells you about various things. Uh, specifically, it's extolling the virtues of yoga. So, for example, <clears throat> it says, Balm of the Orient, Bliss Inspiring Yoga. And then it goes on to extol the virtues of it. So, for example, here to the top left, it says, This is assuming the Mayurasana posture. Now, if you look at this picture, you know it's fake. It's not the real Mayurasana. The real Mayurasana is happening in the picture at the bottom here. And I know that because I am the one who's doing it. There was another guy called Yogi Ramacharka. He wrote about a dozen books on yoga. For example, there was a book called the Hindu Yogi Science of Breath. This is part of his over 100 books that he had written over a period of time. Yet, the fact is, Yogi Ramacharka never existed. There were other names like Swami Bhakta Vishita and Swami Panchadasi. Neither of them existed either. Who did exist was a guy called William Walker Atkinson. He was a lawyer and he was behind writing all these books, especially about yoga. Why did he write about yoga? Well, basically it was the flavor of the day between say 1910 and 1920. And that's where most of his books were written. And there was a whole bunch of other people who arose around the same time in the 1920s, 1930s in the US. Uh, one guy was named Yogi Hamid Bey. He was presumably from Egypt. And he used to appear in various parts along with other relatively well-known yogi of the proper kind, in this case, for example, Swami Yogananda. So, in other words, Swami Yogananda entertained uh, people like Hamid Bey, but we do know Hamid Bey's background had absolutely nothing to do with yoga at all. He was just a plain old magician. And so, uh, various Swamis also hung around with very questionable characters. Uh, the other guy that uh, Swami Yogananda hung around with is this uh, Brahmachari Nirod. In fact, you can see a picture of Brahmachari Nirod getting married to an American lady and uh, Swami Yogananda is performing the marriage for uh, Yogi Nirod. And this kind of uh, false narrative about yoga and yogis across the globe, especially in the Western countries. Here's an example of that. This was a, a book published by the Belgian uh, illustrator uh, on Tata in 1936. As you can see, here's an illustration of what a yogi, or in this case, uh, some fakir called Rama Charma was doing. So first thing you see, he's walking on broken glass and things over here. And then he's stabbing himself with a bunch of knives. And then he's rotating himself over a sharp object right there and so on. So clearly this 
was the kind of perception that India was projecting around the West. It also got mixed up with the show business. So for example, Mae West was a very famous Hollywood actress and she had an encounter with Sri Devaram Sukul who was happened to be a healer and the president of Yoga Institute of America. So when Mae West was performing in Chicago, she had a debilitating pain for which she had to cancel a number of her shows. Uh, eventually in desperation, her manager called some guy and he turned out to be this uh, Deva Ramasukul who prescribed to Mae West some, uh, some cure basically by touching her in her body parts and then she got cured. So as a result, she became a big fan of uh, Mr. Sukul and she was, she patronized him and she in fact uh, promoted him when she got back to California. Uh, in the Swami circuit, there were other guys like Bhagavan Biseswar who used to go do uh, shows. So you can see here on Wednesday, he was doing a show where he talks about India. On Thursday, he does talk about living, how to do proper living. And then on Friday, he does the mind business. And on Saturday, he does action as to what needs to be done. So if you notice, all of these things are for free. Of course, uh, this free bit only applies for his talks. Then he would come at the end of his talk, after an hour long talk, he would say, if you really want to get to the nitty gritty of it, then you have to make a private appointment, of course, which would cost you money. And that's how this yogi circuit went around all across America. In fact, LA Times had an article, it was called the Bank of Swamis during the interwar period. And you had a whole list of yogis or yoga uh, exponent, or pretended to be yoga exponent. Most of them were not doing anything that has to do anything to do with yoga, but they were just pretending to be yoga experts. Uh, I should say pretending to be the postural yoga expert, of which we are talking about here. So this, this happened up until 1965, where US has a very clear policy of keeping those riffraff from Asia out. In particular, they had an exclusion for Hindus. In particular, in some states had a specific clause saying that Hindus are not supposed to get any residency in our state. Now, inevitably, there was a Christian backlash and that backlash persists to this day. So, for example, there was a master's thesis produced by a student in Liberty University fairly recently who argued that people who do yoga are the people who are sent by the devil. And the logic was the following. In, in most of yoga discourses, right from the beginning, you see this imagery of raising the kundalini. And that has become a fundamental part of yoga. So what exactly is Kundalini? It's a representation of a snake. Now, as you know, a snake in Christianity is a very, very bad omen. So raising or hobnobbing with the serpent is a no-no. And therefore, anything that has to do with serpent, in particular yoga, is a bad thing. 